Hello and welcome to another special Halloween season edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking? Uh, we're drinking Wolfsbane Bitter. Which is very fitting for today's episode. Top 10 best practical werewolf designs. A lot of yeah. CGI wolf shit out yeah. there. <laughs> A lot of bad CGI wolf shit. Even the yeah. new one, the new Wolfman, we're looking at it and it's like... It looks kind of part practical, maybe, but it's definitely touched up with CGI. Yep. So it's off the list. Exactly. Fuck it. Previous years, we tackled Dracula movies. We tackled mm -hmm. Frankenstein movies. And now we're going to give the werewolf movies their due. <laughs> First one on our list is 2002's Dog Soldiers. Now, this thing is... Huge. Yeah. It's so big where you almost like they can't fit the whole thing in the frame of the film. Right. You either see like just a torso and up. <laughs> Massive. Yeah, he's probably one of the biggest werewolves out of the whole list that we have. It's rare you ever see him that huge. They don't show you the whole werewolf in a long scene. It's always just quick shots. You kind of have to piece together what he looks like. For a newer movie, 2002, you'd almost expect CGI. Yeah. So kudos to them for not going that route. 2002 would have been some pretty bad CGI. <laughs> exactly. Next one on our list, uh, the year 2000, Ginger Snaps. And this one's a, a Canadian movie too, no yeah. less. This one looks a little more goblin style, right? Yeah, like it's... sort of less werewolf or less animal-like more sort of monster. It doesn't have much hair, which is kind of odd for a werewolf. Looks like one of those hairless cats a little bit. <laughs> it's gotten rabies or something. The only thing is the transformation scene isn't all that great. The transformation scene looks Canadian. But once you get to the wolf, it's like, oh, okay, that, that made up for the transformation scene. <laughs> Which brings us to 1996's Bad Moon. Again, with a terrible transformation scene. <laughs> it's just awful. Like, yeah. it's, it's borderline enough to ruin the whole movie. Werewolf design more than makes up for the rest of all that shit. The werewolf looks quite evil, too. And he looks very mangy. <laughs> And it brings us to 1988's Waxwork, along cartoony lines. Suits the movie, because the movie is kind of cartoony and colorful. Tears that fucking guy right in half. <laughs> right in half yeah. Oh man, which is wicked. Very 80s looking werewolf, because mm -hmm. it looks like 80s rock star hair or something. It's yeah. all teased. You're and, right. Yeah. <laughs> The next one on our list is 1987's Monster Squad. Made to look more like the original 1941 Wolfman is what it's inspired by. Mm. Not only was he designed by makeup artist Stan Winston, he was also made to kind of look like him too. <laughs> so, because he was he always had the beard and everything, so they kind of made him look like Stan Winston as a werewolf, mm -hmm. which is kind of neat. Half clothed, rather than the Wolfman who's fully clothed, yeah. right? Tight jeans on and mm -hmm. the shirts open and everything. And, yeah, I like that he's smaller too. He's not some big, huge thing. He's small, like man-sized, mm -hmm. but he still looks terrifying. The Monster Squad, it's kind of this comedy yeah. movie. They really went to town on the effects, too, oh, right? Oh, they're great. And not only is the werewolf great looking in the Monster Squad, the uh, Gill Man design looks <laughs> yeah. great, too. And the gills are all moving, yeah. too. That brings us to 1985's Silver Bullet with the Gary Busey who really <laughs> takes a fucking beating in this. <laughs> Just get thrown into like every mirror yeah. and piece of glass in the room. Bear-like. Yeah, it looks than... more bear-like than a wolf. Yeah. Which kind of takes away from it a bit, but it's still realistic enough looking, even though it doesn't look so much like a wolf. That's right. The regression scene in this is actually really good too where he's turning back into a man after being a wolf and after mm -hmm. he's killed it, it looks really good. Yeah, so they, you can see like, they wanted to do something different, right? And they, they managed to do it. Yeah. They managed to keep the story kind of fresh. The next one on our list is 1981's The Howling. Right. Again, another great practical transformation scene. Robert Picardo <laughs> turning into the wolf, it's great. I think you, you said you might even prefer it over American Werewolf in London. Yeah, I think American Werewolf in London is better by a hair, 
but I like the Howling one better. It's yeah. more of a personal preference. While he's cringing, turning into the werewolf, you're cringing, looking yeah. at it. You know, you're kind of doing the same. Yeah. It's like, ah. All the wolves in the movie, because there's more than one, mm -hmm. uh, they look great. Oh, yeah. They all look fucking scary. Part of a clan from, like, hundreds or thousands of years ago. Yes, yeah, just not one wolf that's on the prowl. It's mm -hmm. like a whole bunch of them. <laughs> That brings us to one of the most famous American werewolf in London. The makeup design and transformation scene was done by effects legend Rick Baker. This one has probably the most famous transformation scene. The pain involved in the yeah. transformation really comes through, and it was probably the first movie to really have that painful, like, agonizing transformation. Mm -hmm. The way Landis sets the scene up, too, with the, the song playing in the background, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a sort of a somber kind of song too, so you really kind of, yeah. you feel it, you know, the whole way. And then when he is the wolf, it's a four-legged wolf, he's mm -hmm. not standing on two legs, and he's going through the city, mm -hmm. and oh, it, it's, it looks terrifying. It's probably the most terrifying wolf on the list. That's right, and after he's killed, the way he looks with all the, the blood, blood and yeah. everything, yeah. holy shit, man, it's, it's fucking great. <laughs> Next one on our list is, well, the classic, the one that kind of put werewolf movies on the map. Mm -hmm. 1941's The Wolfman. <laughs> it's kind of funny how we've jumped from 1981 all the way to 1941. There's a span of 40 years where there really wasn't any good werewolf movies yeah. or werewolf designs. Effects were done by universal monster maker and legend Jack Pierce. He did the Frankenstein design, mm -hmm. he did the Wolfman, he did the Mummy. Yep. And the, the cool thing about this wolf design is he used actual real wolf hair on the face and it was like a painstakingly long right. uh, makeup process because it wasn't like a mask or anything. It was all these little pieces and for the time it was really, really good. This werewolf or wolfman is a little different than a lot of the other ones on the list because it's still kind of a man. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like completely a wolf. It's more man than wolf. Yeah. And he's fully dressed, you know, he's wearing <laughs> pants and a shirt and everything. He's less a wolf. He's more monster. Because he doesn't really look like a wolf. Not He just really. looks like a very hairy man. And there's one even before that. <laughs> 1935's Werewolf of London. I really like this design. I even prefer it over the 1941 Wolfman. This guy looks so f scary. I think he looks more like a wolf than the Wolfman. Even though there's less hair on him, it's all with the, the features, the facial features, with mm -hmm. the kind of the brow and stuff. It looks more wolf-like. Right, and the lighting that they have yeah. in this movie too really adds. His eyes are all black, kind yeah. of. He looks scary. Yeah, very scary looking. Like a nightmare. Yeah, with minimal like hair and effects. It's just subtle, but it works. Right, and they, the transformation scene too, Oh, scenes yeah. for 1935 are really great. Like there's that one scene where he, he walks past those pillars and he transforms a little yeah. more each time. Yeah. Like that's great. He's fully dressed. He's always a well-dressed <laughs> wolf. You know, he's like a, yeah. wearing like a nice coat and yeah, scarf all, and everything. Yeah, he all purposely puts that on yeah. as the wolf man <laughs> when he goes out. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit more of a Jekyll and Hyde thing where he's not completely taken over by the wolf. You mm -hmm. know, he's still thinks like a man to a degree, right? So there we go, that's our list of top 10 practical werewolf designs. Probably missed some, oh. if, if there's any that you also like, please let us know in the comments. Guaranteed, we guaranteed we missed some, but these are some of our favorites. And until next time, keep drinking.